Welcome to the world's only Christmas passion here at the only Kingdom Age channels that are on YouTube. If it can be conceived, it conceptualized, it can be accomplished. We just need to move ahead this Christmas time to let our love transcend and go beyond all that we have imagined that we are and let our love go beyond what we have believed because it does not matter what we believe. We just need to be loving people towards each other. And it was a, a blessed Christmas time. Little baby Jesus in the manger with the hosts all around witnessing the spectacle of the ages. Behold, the Magi and the shepherds on bended knees. And Joseph and Mary had not only received angelic visitations before God first allowed his author of loveliness to grow as a seed in Mary's womb, but it also amazed both of those uh, that our Almighty went on to allow the knowledge of their wonderful new addition, uh, the little baby Jesus, to be supernaturally and naturally spread all over Zion through those astonished shepherds. Even the most silent winds blowing all around them seemed to be carrying the not too distance, uh, not too uh, secret news concerning our brand new searcher of hearts. But those loving newlyweds could only keep the knowledge of such things in their hearts, <laughs> while many others were soon scratching their heads in wonder. For there were many souls who would soon be wondering about the extraordinary things that they would be hearing from those pumped up shepherds. Uh, they were just overflowing with excitement, so there was no gag that could keep them quiet. The rocks would have cried out. After all, those staff-carrying witnesses were also fated to be making known some of the glorious things concerning that man-child whose holy name of love sh will always be far above all others, for he is love, and those who love are born of God and know him, uh, because God is love and Christ is love united with them. So it was time... Uh, but for the time being, it was then the unexpected hour when those five shepherds then pushed in towards our sleepy child king, who would someday be teaching that the uplifting agape love of our Heavenly Father would always bring forth real ecstasy unto anyone, for his presence of love and peace and hope always seems like some cold waters of rushing steam that easily revives a hot body during the hottest sweltering summer heat. It was additionally the foreseen time when those three kings, clad in silken array, were most humbled by the Holy Spirit, who encompassed Christ unseen like a real thick fog of the presence of utter purity. And all three of them mo removed their uh, golden crowns as they bowed down before King Jesus with nothing but awe flooding over their th th thoughts about his incredibility and his remarkability that would just soar to new heights. And uh, it was time never to be any respecter of men. And by the Spirit, they knew that Christ Jesus below them, the little baby yawning, would show, be showing men that God's love is like the sun, which shines down upon all creatures of the earth and doesn't favor one blade of grass for another. And as Gaspar, Melchior, and Balthazar, Beth, uh, as the three kings lowered their heads towards our little Lord of Kings, they understood prophecy well enough to also sense that he would be someday be baptizing people with the fire of God's Spirit, so that their magnified love would start flowing as some rapids from brother to brother, from city to city, and from uh, nation to nation, unto the four pillars of the earth, all over the circle thereof. But none of those three magi magis fully realized that such a godly kind of love is always 
uh, replenished because of the laws of God's love uh, as quickly as it's spent. The more you give, the more you receive. For Agape's love is always eternal and far stronger than death has ever been since it was first declared within the utmost mercy when Adam sinfully did eat. But insofar as Mary and, Mo uh, Mary and Joseph were concerned, our little king of lords being enveloped all about by those eight men and a do dozen animals right next to them, it was a pleasant happening. And nor did they mind the extravagant, uh, valuable gifts uh, that those three kings gave to their baby. Um, you should have seen Mary smile. It, 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 it was like a sunburst of... of uh, appreciation and they knew that uh, the Lord would be blessing all children of love who would stay with a pure heart of love in motion as like when they were a little child so that they would be sure to be born again and not be in the land of the walking dead with the form of godliness denying the power of love therein not committing the unforgivable sin letting your light of love go out and they knew that his word of love would be radiating to all who would embrace it. And even though those wise men uh, couldn't put it into words, they were all most delighted that they were now seeing God's face of benevolence uh, right before them smiling. For they were in the presence of his strongest holy light, who was preordained by our Heavenly Father to be giving his children uh, his spirit a strong love to enable them to help others give their own love away just as freely. Even the three camels of those joyful travelers were also kneeling in behind their masters, and it was as though those beasts of burdens were also, uh, also somehow comprehended that our Savior of all generations would also be kind unto all creatures as they. Uh, for history would soon be proving it to be true, that Christ's destiny would always be one of a real loving soul who would never take the world as his master, so he would never be able to become enslaved by it. Moreover, the unseen hosts all about were uh, seemingly covering the horizon like, uh, like the white clouds. They were all over the place, and neither was there even one heavenly being among them who wasn't totally overjoyed that mankind would soon be finding out that Jesus, from Jesus that mercy and compassion are great virtues which shall always bring their own rewards to them. And they, they knew the scripture of Jeremiah. They knew that the day was coming that Christ would say to all people of the earth, reeling from the tribulation of uh, the great trial of all flesh, Revelation 3, COVID, that's come to bring God's word of patience to keep us from the hour of the temptation not to change by love. And they knew that according as it is written in Jeremiah 30, 24, that it is written that this would be considered the following words in the latter days. It says so. And they knew that it would be this uh, little Lord of Lords that would someday be saying to the nations, I shall return my terrifying anger and stop the fast rising great tribulation if you will give me the desire of my heart, which he would end up preaching in Gethsemane for our oneness. And they were so excited, those proud parents, and the angels all about were delighted with his mission. Additionally, those winged messengers of God's purest love were also thrilled far beyond words that Christ would someday be stressing that any soul walking upon the narrow way of love would always be recompensed with the greatest mercy and tr the truest true loving kindness from the Lord's uh, great white mercy seat on high. Furthermore, those angels were most happy that Isa Yeshua would, uh, Jesus would someday be telling God's faithful few to cry out since that Father of lights would always be hearing them. At the same time, he would always be explaining that even while they were still speaking, God would then say unto them, Lo, I am here. So take away from yourself the yoke and the, uh, the, the, uh, and stretch forth your finger and stop your word of murmuring. Then you shall gladly give your head to, unto the poor who are hungry, and you shall then pity every abased soul. And Satan was greatly dis, dis, 
pleased uh, uh, that night. And there was one false, false faced witness against all of the others who was obviously no happy camper was he. For as Lucifer took a peek at all the commotion going on around that campfire, it came to pass that this devil had a real bad gut feeling that Jesus would someday be teaching multitudes some things that he wouldn't really appreciate by declaring that a man without love truly casts a really dark shadow on everyone that they meet, most of all upon all those that they live around. And that liar was someday also fated to be hearing Christ teaching that the harsh and angry words of such a loveless soul always falls upon his brothers like stench-laden air arising from a stagnant pool. But Jesus would also be tricking that father of lives uh, and ticking him off by further explaining that when such hardened man when someone bows unto the light of love, their darkness is then immediately dispersed, and the light, brightest light of sunshine, the greatest illumination of all of love's adoration, will only stream out of them, thereby giving anyone close by some beautiful feelings of great emotional warmth. What a, a time. It was a time that even St. Nicholas later on would, would uh, be dreaming about, and Christmas was that night happening live, in action. It was therefore a, a most blessed hour when our Father of Lights was proudly blazing with the greatest pride, nor could he keep himself from telling his hosts to let their lyres strike their highest notes while singing his son's anthem of love uh, as many more continued uh, all over that little town of Zion. In great clouds of glory did they come, the seraphim and the cherubim, and the Ophanon and the messenger angels. Even Michael, the archangel, was there. And even the everlasting hills were echoing Christ's name of love, Isa Yeshua Jesus, in the most beautiful kind of triumphant songs. For the unseen soul of that long-expected newborn of the ages was then burning away inwardly, um, so much so, so much brighter, with a perfection of love that was unbelievable. It was brighter than the brightest glimmering twinkles of his announcing star of Bethlehem. For our little Lord Jesus was the real star of Bethlehem during that most blessed, holy, and silent night. And Mary then nestled uh, um, uh, and meeked, uh, rested her little uh, Lord Jesus upon uh, Joseph's breast, who praised her to his gladdened heart, while Mary gently began uh, folding that babe of babes back into her pure bosom. But she had to almost uh, fight Joseph for Joseph to give him back because he just wanted to love him to death. But once she had him back in arms, all over that most remarkable scene, countless angelic beings could have heard a halo drop when Mary all of a sudden bundled up that sweet fruit of her womb, wrapping him ever so tightly within her tightest love, a real warm blanket and prayers of thanksgiving unto God were exploding from her chest. For the uh, that evening was, though it was becoming late, and the witnesses to his glory had already been adoring him almost two hours. It was like an hour and a half they were there. And uh, the guardian angels were then posted uh, for Jesus to keep him safe in all his doings. And then the angelic hosts all around our everlasting joy watched Isa Yeshua Jesus very closely as they were guarding that king eternal from Herod's spies who were crawling around Bethlehem area too. And nor were any of them not overflowing with the uttermost awe as they beheld the little Lord Jesus' most radiant splendor, the glory of his love. For every single angel there, whether cherub, archangel, or messenger, they all well understood that the future of their royal highness, their majesty of majesties, hero of heroes, would be seeing him making anyone alive within himself by love if they no longer wished to be in the land of the walking dead where people let their love die on the road to perishing of the unforgivable sin. And he knew that uh, all these people would reverse the curse by the love that Christ would be 
sharing and teaching. Therefore, the host held on to the revelation that the dead who died in the Lord would be blessed and would be made perfect by his everlasting love, his eternal, his eternal adoration, his, his ongoing charity and benevolence, for he is, always shall be, the, the most beneficent of the magnificent uh, uh, being of love ever imagined, who was before all things, who was slain before the foundation of the earth for all. And so it was that the ambience all over that manger area was like a sacred one, like it was like a glorious temple was thereabouts because of the the tongues of both men and angels were both united in adoring and magnifying our little Lord Jesus, God in the flesh, Emmanuel, God with us, on the account of the birth of that incarnate Lord of love. And the overflowing mood all around that stall-like enclave was one of really uh, overflowing euphoria and joyful excitement. And it was also clear that nobody thereabouts ever really wanted that spiritual ecstasy of this once-in-a-lifetime event to ever fade away into forgetfulness. They just wanted to keep that Kodak moment in their minds and hearts forever. It was truly a Polaroid moment uh, when all saw the little Jesus smile for the first time. And neither did any anyone want this phenomenal earth-changing happening to ever disappear into some forgotten memories. But er, uh, even after the mortal uh, witnesses left and the three kings and the shepherds were gone, our majesty of majesties still had joyful angels lingering around so they could embrace his brightest shadows. Uh, the angels heard Jesus speak a lot through his heart, and they heard him speak many times during eternity past, as he had carefully explained that any being desiring to be chief must first become a servant, as I am the servant of the Lord of Isaiah 49, who has done everything in my life for vain, says the Latter-day Daniel of Daniel 12, 13. Christ never did anything in vain, nor would he ever do anything in vain. He knew he would be sending his kingdom age new covenant of Jeremiah 31 unto all the all peoples of the earth. And those angels also knew that our Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life as a paid and full ransom for many multitudes. And for that reason, those heaven's troopers also foresaw the days when he would eventually be telling those with ears to hear that the consummation of the beginning of the end would come forth when a tree would lean in over and stand up and such would come to pass when sacrificial blood would be flowing as a sap from it. And they also heard the end of that story, however, for in the days of King, King David, our pre-existent Lord, once prophesied to them that after his second coming of his word in the days of the latter-day Daniel, his Elijah, the writer of uh, Habakkuk 2.2, 2, that all those reading it would run, the writer of Isaiah 28, the strong and the mighty, the Elijah task, latter-day servant. Uh, they knew that the days of plenty would also be sure to be coming forth upon the earth in the latter days when the kingdom age would begin slowly. Uh, for it would be like a grain of wheat would be bringing forth 10,000 heads, and each head would have 10,000 grains, and each grain would produce five pounds of flour, and those angels were filled with utter, utmost awe. And the imagination of the... Of the uh, blessings for mankind that would come, that it would actually, the world would start becoming like Eden, uh, as the prophet Joel has foretold. And in his pre-existent form, he had proclaimed unto those angels that the remaining fruits, seeds, and herbage within the uh, forthcoming kingdom age and the fullness thereof and during that time that all of the animals would be using those foods taken from earth and in turn they would become peacefully tame, uh, being subject to men after the worst of the wild nature of their genetic seeds become, becomes transformed by humility supernaturally. Therefore Jesus had said, 
that those would be the fantastic times of God's greatest kingdom age authority and the greatest glory of love, just as Isaiah long ago prophesied when he wrote that the son of love and righteousness would arise with healing in his wings, Isaiah 60, to destroy all gross darkness of this world, and that the wolf also would be dwelling metaphorically with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them not one little child the the loving faith of one little child one shall become a thousand as love uh erases uh not erases as it erases all the bad stuff in the world as it races uh, all over the circle of the earth and the Magi were so blessed uh, in their time that they had spent there. It was a time to turn up the flowers or to turn up the power of the fire of love and to let the snap, crackle, and pop of his adoration, his charity, and his benevolence reach out to a hurting world more now than ever. Help those that you can see that are around you, people of love. For if you can't help those that you can see, how could you truly love uh, little Lord Jesus that you cannot see?